All right, guys. So apparently I answered question number one, A. So yeah, there's going to be four nomenclature questions. Um, they're going to be just like this. They're going to be straight from your in-chapter questions. I'm not going to go over nomenclature. You can look these up yourself. Okay. Physical properties. All right. So physical properties and boiling points. Boiling points follow physical properties. Strongest physical property. I'm sorry. Intermolecular force is my bad. Um, strongest IMF, highest boiling point. Okay. Um, we have three compounds that can hydrogen bond. Okay. One that cannot. So diethyl ether is going to have the lowest boiling point. Okay. This compound, this compound can only hydrogen bond in one site, two sites here with this diol. Okay. This is going to be my highest boiling point. This is so called straight, better stacking, branch, lower boiling point. So that's how you would approach this question. Okay. So, which of the following alcohols would give the slowest reaction with HCl? Okay, HCl, you have to remember, is what? In an aqueous solution. Okay, and so aqueous solution promotes what? SO1 reactions. So, you have to look at these substrates and think, okay, well, which one of these would give us the fastest rate of SO1? This is a primary substrate. This is a secondary substrate. This is methanol. So it's a methyl substrate. And this is tertiary. So as far as giving us the quickest SN2 reaction, I'm sorry, SN1 reaction, it would be my tertiary substrate. Okay. All right. Oops, sorry about that. Oh, I hate that. Okay, so we're gonna need to insert proper reagents and solvents for three different for these different um, reactions. Okay, so again, sometimes there's more than one answer. Um, sometimes there's only one answer, okay? For example, the very first one, you could do this with H2SO4. It's also sulfuric acid. Or another alternative would be what? It would be Pockel with pyridine. Okay, so any one of those, any one of these would work. So these are all or, or, okay? Now, the second one, there's only one option. This is one of the possible, possible products. And what you see here is we've gone from having a quaternary carbon to having a tertiary carbon. So there's definitely a rearrangement. And the only time you see rearrangement is when you have a carbocation, okay? And so I have a secondary alcohol that formed a carbocation. So this needs to be under aqueous conditions. And as far as alcohols go, the only thing that will give us an SM1 okay, halogenation is HBr. And that's all you need. Okay, that's all you need. All right, my kitty Carmen is lurking. He desperately wants to be loved. All right, the next one is a two-stepper. Okay, <clears throat> what I need to notice here, I have bromine and an acetylide anion, okay? We can add bromine under SM1 or SM2 conditions. In other words, or I'm sorry, not SM1, I'm sorry, acidic or basic conditions. Okay, we could either do HBr, Okay. Actually, no, we can we can only add it under acidic conditions because sodium bromide isn't a strong enough nucleophile. Okay. So that's one of our options, adding the bromine. Okay. But if we add the bromine under acidic conditions, we're going to get this. And there's no way to convert the OH into an acetylide anion. Okay, into this functional group right here. We can, however, use an acetylide anion to open up the epoxide. And then we can convert an OH into a bromine using PBR3. Okay, so number one would be it a H comma, this guy here. 
to water. Now we really haven't talked about the stereochemistry of these um, in terms of how epoxides react on rings. So on your exam, the answer is just gonna have straight lines, right? Or the product rather, I'll just have like straight lines here. And anytime you see straight lines, that means that you can ignore stereochemistry, okay? That's what that means. The second half, okay, would be PBR3. And if you can't remember the conditions, Probably it's someplace else in the exam, right? It's like, I can't remember PBR3 has pyridine. Well, let me go over to the reaction portion. No, no, she didn't use it. Oh, there it is. She used it right here. And she doesn't have any other solvent. So I don't need to include any other solvent. Okay, and so if you can't remember Pockel, you know, the reaction conditions are probably someplace else on the exam. Okay, someplace else on the exam. All right, so... That's that question, okay? Which of the following would provide the best yield for Williams and ether synthesis? Sodium methoxide, which is this guy here, and tert butyl bromide, which is this guy here, or sodium methoxide, which is again, this guy here, and one chloropropane which is, of course, this guy here. Now, for Williams and ether synthesis, what we need to remember is this is basically an SN2 reaction, okay? And so we need to remember who's going to go undergo the fastest rate of SN2 with respect to our alkyl halide. So methyl halides are the fastest, followed by primary halides, followed by secondary alkyl halides. So this right here is a tertiary. Okay, so it's not going to give you SN2. It's only going to give you E2. So if I react sodium methoxide with tert butyl bromide, all I'm going to get is this. So this is the only option, okay, because this is primary. <clears throat> it might give me some E2, but it's going to give me mostly SN2 because it's got a faster rate for SN2. The ether that I form, it's just simple. Oops, that's an ugly arrow. Sorry. It's just simply this. So, new bond here. One, two, three. Okay. And so, that right, the product of the reaction, which is what I just did there. All right, moving on. Which of the following alcohols could undergo carbocation rearrangement? Okay. So again, carbocation rearrangement only happens what? When you form a secondary carbocation, all right? And next to the secondary carbocation, because it's a one, two hydride shift or a one, two methyl shift, it's not a one, four, it's not a long distance, right? We're not moving across the damn country. It's only next door, okay? And so I have a secondary carbon next to a tertiary hydrogen or a quaternary methyl. Okay, those are my options. So right off the bat, we see that this first one is a tertiary alcohol, so no bueno. Okay, this right here is a secondary alcohol, and it is next to a tertiary hydrogen, okay? <clears throat> so that can undergo a rearrangement, okay? Again, here we have a, oops, we have a secondary hydroxyl group, secondary alcohol rather, next to a quaternary methyl. So that guy can undergo a rearrangement, okay? Next alcohol, sure it's tertiary, secondary, but my neighbors are also secondary, okay? Because remember, what is it that allows the hydrides and the methyls to shift? It's that hyperconjugation. Okay, we're weakening those neighboring carbon-carbon bonds or carbon-hydrogen bonds, 
Okay, you're not getting hyperconjugation from these puppies over here, too far away. So I'm not going to rearrange and form another secondary carbocation. So even though that's a secondary alcohol, it can't rearrange because it doesn't have what? A neighboring hydride, tertiary hydride, or a neighboring um, quaternary methyl. All right. I think that this is on the sample exam. Oh, wait, no, this is the sample exam. All right, so <clears throat> you're going to have one ring expansion, and I'm going to show you the product I want. All right, I don't want to see any other products. Yes, I know other products can form. That's not what I'm asking, okay? I'm going to ask you for the mechanism for this product. So, again, first step. First step is always going to be coordination. I'm going to show it like this because remember the last step of this, this is acid um, catalyzed. So we have to show the reformation of sulfuric acid. So I'm going to make bisulfite. So minus SO4H. It should be HSO4 minus. So minus HSO4 minus. So I lost bisulfite. Okay, so then I'm going to redraw the substrate. I don't drop any carbons. All right. So we have two options here. Okay. We have two options. And those of you that have may have been trying to solve this already, maybe are, are, are finding out that what you might have done didn't really help any. Okay. So we're going to go over option number one, which is going to be wrong. And I'll show you. Oops. I'm getting all excited here. I forgot to get my leaving group to leave. Shoot. Leaving group leaves. <laughs> <sighs> and then we have option number one or option number two. All right. I'm a carbon cation here. Okay. And this is where the ring expansion is going to happen, right? Ring expansion is a form of carbocation rearrangement. <clears throat> so I have two options here. Okay. Show you the first option that doesn't work. Okay. So the first option that doesn't work is going to be this guy right here. I'm going to break this bond here and I'm going to expand. Okay. I'm going to number my carbons, but I'm only going to number the carbons that are involved in the ring. Okay. And it doesn't matter how you number. I'm just I'm just numbering. I'm going to go one, two. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. All right. So right off the bat, I know that I'm going to form a five-membered ring. Okay. So it also helps you with that. So I'm going to draw my five-membered ring. Okay. And then I'm going to look. And I saw that I formed my new bond between carbon one and carbon five. Coming off of carbon five is this propyl group, right? That guy coming off of carbon one is this methyl group right here. So then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish numbering. So five, four, shit. I just saw it. So yeah, that's another reason the numbering is good. Okay, so five, four, three, two, one. Okay. I broke the bond between carbon two. I'm sorry, between carbon three and one. So carbon three is going to have my carbocation. And when I look at this and I look at the final product, the ethyl and the propyl are right next to, and the methyl and the propyl are right next to each other. Okay. And that's not going to work. So that's not how the ring is going to open. 
And so sometimes you do have to do it this way. Sometimes you got to see what works. So I'm going to try to open up the ring the other direction. I'm going to try to open up the ring this way. And so again, I'm going to count my carbons. Or number my carbons. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So that still gives me a five membered ring. My new bond this time is in between carbon two and five. So I'm going to say this is my new bond. I'm going to say this is carbon five. And this is carbon two. Okay. So again, coming off of five is the propyl. <clears throat> Right here, I'm going to continue the number of the rest of my ring. So five, four, oops. So two, one, three, four, there we go. Coming off of carbon one is the methyl. Okay, so everybody, right? These are two carbons away, so everybody has their relative distance. Okay, I broke the bond on carbon three. So this is where my carbocation is going to be. See right here? I took the electrons away from three and gave them the five. So I'm going to do a real quick hydride shift. That's going to give me this right here. Carbocations right here. I need to deprotonate here. So bisulfite that I formed at the very beginning. I'm very patiently waiting to reform sulfuric acid. Okay, and there you go. Uh, if you suck at this, don't spend all your time on this. Don't don't waste all your damn brain juice on this. I don't remember how many points I made it, eight or seven. Okay, so. I mean, do stuff you can do first, okay? Anyways, draw the mechanism, okay? Again, I don't remember how many mechanism questions I gave you on the exam, okay? I think it was four, but I don't remember. If I have an acid and I have an alcohol, step one needs to be protonation. Why do we protonate? To form a good leaving group. I have a good leaving group here. Now, this is where a lot of you guys are going to lose points. Okay. You're either not going to see there's a rearrangement opportunity, or you are going to see there's a rearrangement opportunity. And that's the only product you're going to form. But you have to remember the form product before and after. Okay. So, for example, before any rearrangement, chloride will come in. I'm going to form this racemic mixture. Okay. So that's product number one, or I guess two, since it's both R and S. Okay. But then I also have this option. I can do a hydride shift, which will then give me this carbocation. The chloride can then attack. It's an achiral center, okay? So we don't say racemic, and so my two products are here. And again, you can write racemic because this is a racemic mixture, or you can simply write a dash and a wedge. Okay, number two. Now, this is a little bit different than just crossing out the metal because nitrogen has three bonds. <laughs> so you just need to remember that hydrogen is always going to be neutral when it's part of a molecule, okay? The negative charges on the nitrogen, okay? So nucleophilic attack, it's basic conditions. So it's going to attack the least substituted side. We're going to open up our epoxide. And so something that I always do here 
so as not to screw up my stereo chemistry, right? Is I just redraw it like this. I keep the epoxy the same. Then what I do is I draw my new bond. And then NH ethyl. If you don't remember the ET is ethyl, write ET. Some of you guys might remember the ET is ethyl, so you can write ethyl, it doesn't matter. All right, so that's step one. Okay. Notice I didn't do anything to, to the uh, dashed portion. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add my water so I can protonate because we never leave our final compound um, charged. Oops. And so this is what we form here. Okay. All right. Thionyl chloride. This is its structure. Oh, shit. Um, obviously, that's supposed to be an OH. Huh. My bad. I'll take a picture of that and send that in out too. All right. Because <laughs> that's like no reaction right there. <laughs> All righty then. So my bad. Nucleophilic attack. Kick this off. Kick this off. Oopsie. Sorry. Been doing carbonyl chemistry. Got a little carried away. All right. So step one. Okay. We're going to add this to the substrate like so. So I have this intermediate species. Remember what I told you guys? If I have pyridine here, it's kind of like a hint. You need to depronate the intermediate, intermediate species. Oops, need to draw the bond. All right. This is where the SN2 reaction happens. So the chloride that we lost up here in this step is going to come back and attack backside. This bond right here is going to break from the pi bond and sulfur dioxide. And another equivalence of chloride is going to be kicked off. So I'm going to get substitution. Remember, sulfur dioxide is the driving force of this reaction, but you know you don't have to write that. All I need is the organic product. Just want you to remember that. Okay, that sulfur dioxide is formed, and that kind of helps you remember that you need to kick off the chloride and form that second pi bond between oxygen and sulfur. Again, you know these are four points a piece and four points of product. That's all you can remember is the product and write it down. I had a student last semester get an A, and all he ever wrote was the products. I have a oxygen. I have an acid. Step one, protonation. So again, okay, who's going to be my leaving group? Okay. This is, again, it's it's implied that it's an aqueous solution because it's an acid. So am I going to form a methyl carbocation? Eh. Or am I going to form a tertiary carbocation? Right? We'll form those puppies all day long. I don't mind being formed. So now I have methanol plus this carbocation here. I just redrew it. Okay, and then chloride that I formed in the first step is going to come in and attack. And it stops, remember? 
only one equivalence. Okay, if I want it to keep going, I'm either going to say two equivalents of the acid or I'm going to say excess of the acid. Okay, all right, moving on. What are the products? There's more than one reaction. You need to write the intermediate. So this is reaction number one, reaction number two. Reaction number one gives me what? Rumination S and two style. So remember to flip it. I need to realize that this is also an S and two reaction. Okay, tellurium is in the oxygen family. So it re reacts just like oxygen does. So I'm gonna have my second inversion. And so there you go, okay. Paco gives me E2 elimination of alcohols. So here and here. So that's product number one. Product number two. Now, if you write this as well, obviously these two guys are the same as I've always said all semester, I will not take up points. Okay. Next one, I'm gonna tosylate. Okay. So what's important here is what? We never break the oxygen carbon bond. So we keep the stereochemistry, but again, Second half of this is SN2 reaction. So then, I mean, tosylate is just a good leaving group. You treat it like bromide, you treat it like iodide, you treat it like chlorine, okay? Second half, okay, is we're gonna cyanate this, okay? Second half is just plain J and SN2 in chapter seven. All right, we don't know what LDA is. This is an old exam I used to, um, I used to use that. But anyways, that's just a strong, 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 strong base, freakishly strong, okay? And so that's just gonna deprotonate the oxygen and halohydrins. Anytime you see this, the only thing we use it for is to make epoxides, okay? Those halohydrins, the only thing we use them for is to make epoxides. So this is kind of a well, oh, shit. This should say this. My bad. Anyways, apparently I was batting a thousand. This is what happens when all you do is work. All that's going to do is break apart. And you're going to get this plus this. Yeah, I better review your exam before I get it printed. Make sure I didn't make any mistakes on your stupid exam. Yeah, I think I'll take that tonight to make sure I didn't make any mistakes. All right. My bad. Two mistakes. All right. So this is the substrate for the NMR. Okay. It's being reacted with Pockel. It's also being reacted with sodium hydride. So what we know is what? It's an alcohol. Okay. <clears throat> this is an OH peak right here. Okay. This is the carbon or the hydrogens that are on the carbon that are that are attached to the OH. How do I know that? Because they're the furthest downfield. Okay. They're not going to couple to the OH. They're a pentet, which means I have four neighbors. So the only thing that makes sense, one of my neighbors is a CH3, probably this CH3. And the other neighbor is a CH. Probably this CH. So now he's a heptet.
So now he's a hepta. No. No, that can't be it, because then I'm out. Um, hold on. I should have done this before I started doing this. <sighs> That's a pentat. Hold on. I'm going to go over here and do this real quick. CH2 triplet. It's a CH2. Next to a CH3. That's that guy. He's a pentet. So he's also next to a CH. Then I have this CH. Ah. Heptet. CH3. Sorry, I stumped myself. That's how you get the six around that guy. I thought I had an isopropyl group there for a second, but obviously I don't. All right, so there we go. So that's my CH over here. So there's my alcohol. And then my last CH3 group. What color did I make that? I didn't make it any color. But this has got to be riveting watching me stumble through this van. This is like some badass TV, right? Sorry, folks. So it's this structure. Okay, so that's the structure. So one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, and on the exam. Yeah, obviously you have the, uh, what's it called? Molecular formulas up here. All right, so do your degrees of hydration, all that good shit. All right, <clears throat> if I don't specify, you can give me either product, but I think on the exam I did specify that I want the major product. So Paco gives me E2. Okay. This is going to give me a Williamson ether synthesis. Okay. If I react this in the presence of thionyl chloride, I'll get substitution and chlorination. Well, apparently I had a lot of cyanide on my brain when I wrote this exam. Another SN2, just like we just talked about. KBR. Okay, another SN2. Okay, I'm going to react it with um, hydrogen sulfide. Another SN2. And then lithium methoxide substitution only would give me that same product there. All right. So that's it. Um, yeah. I'll see you guys in class.